Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thanks for attending today. I'm Carrie Stanton with Chief Architect, and we're going to talk about automatic roofs. Uh, we have a number of Chief Architect staff members available to help with your questions as we go through the webinar. So I'll start my presentation, which will be about 30 minutes. And during that time, uh, feel free to chat in questions to our staff. Following the presentation, we'll open up for live questions. If you want to ask your question live, just raise your hand using the GoToMeeting controls. Uh, in our session today, uh, it will be recorded and we'll be sending a link out to that recording in the next few days. Uh, we'll also be including a survey in that and we'd really appreciate if you give us some feedback and uh, let us know how we're doing. And um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. If you attended last week's webinar, you would have seen a quick overview of how the auto roof works and how the walls can control the roof. This week, we're going to dig in a bit deeper with those, as well as shed, barrel, Dutch gable, and half hip roof styles. Then we'll dive into some options for parapet roofs. Let's start by manipulating the automatic roof tools. Here we have a project that's getting close to completion, but really the sooner you start to think about the roof, the better. The more rooms that you have, the more complicated it can get to manipulate the automatic roofs. For as-builts with multiple ceiling heights or split levels, if you only put in the bearing walls that separate the different heights and leave out the rest of the walls until you get the roof set, it'll save you a lot of frustration. So let's put a roof on this project. When you're getting used to the roof tools and how they work, I find it useful to have a 3D view open as well as the plan view. I'll select 3D, Create Perspective View, Perspective Full Overview, and then I'll tile the view by going to Window, Tile Vertically. If you have two monitors, I recommend pulling the camera view off onto your second monitor so that you have more space on screen. For now though, I'll just grab the divider here and reduce the size of the camera view since I just use it for a reference and do the majority of my edits in the plan view. Now in my plan view, I'll switch to the roof plan view. This will switch my layer set and defaults so that my roofs will be the star of the show. If you start with your residential template plan, you'll see this roof plan view in your saved plan view dropdown. I've made a couple of changes so I can see the roof configuration more clearly. I've turned off the display of the roof's overhang area and the roof gutters layer, and I've turned on the roof baselines layer. I've also increased the line weight associated with my roof planes layer so that you can more easily see those lines once my roof is built. I'll go to Build, Roof, and then choose Build Roof to open up my Build Roof dialog. This dialog you can treat as the roof defaults. The roof will follow the directives of this dialog unless otherwise specified to do so by the walls or other tools. I'll start by putting a check mark in the Auto Rebuild Roofs checkbox. This will build the roof for me and will automatically rebuild the roof as I make changes to the plan. I'll change the pitch to 10 and 12. If you're going to frame with trusses, go ahead and put a check mark in the trusses checkbox. Otherwise, leave it blank. Now is a good time to review the other settings as well. In particular, I recommend reviewing the values on the structure panel. While the auto rebuild roof is on, you can review the structure whenever you'd like. However, if you need to switch to editing the roofs manually, it becomes more of a chore to correct the rafter depth if you haven't set that earlier. So, if you know the size of your rafters, I recommend setting these early on so that you don't have to correct for it later. You can do so by clicking this Edit button next to the structure under the Roof Layers heading. Going back to the roof panel, I'll verify that I've turned on the Auto Rebuild Roofs and then I'll click OK. This is what the Auto Roof Builder gives me when I haven't given it any other direction. I have a roof plane generating on each exterior wall that does not have another wall on top of it. A hip roof condition. Looking at my 3D view, you can see that I have a few things to correct. I like to start by specifying my gable ends. As mentioned earlier, when the auto rebuild roof is on, the roof will follow the directives in the build roof dialog unless specified to do so differently by the walls or other tools. I'll select the front wall here and then I'll click open object to open the wall specification. In the specification dialog, I'll go to the roof panel and choose the option for full gable wall and then click OK. You can see that this wall is now gabled and we have the triangular wall filling the space created. There is a shortcut for that full gable wall toggle that is in the specification. 
If you have a wall selected, on the Edit toolbar you'll find the Change to Gable Wall, or the Change to Hip Wall tool if the wall is already gabled. You can click on this and toggle back and forth between hip and gable. As long as your auto rebuild roof is on, you'll see the change update in real time. Let's go through and gable the other areas of the first floor. Now I'll move up to the second floor. There are a couple of unique areas for gables up here. On the front side of the house, you can see these two steps. If I gable both of these bumped out steps, I'll get a nested gable condition. Now let's gable the left and right hand sides. You can see that I end up with this odd saddle in my ridge line. This happens when the span on one side doesn't match the span on the other, the spans are offset from each other, or both. Let's take a look at the geometry of this roof to find out what's going on. This is the reason why I have the roof baselines layer on when I'm working on roofs, so I can see where the program is starting my roof. I've changed this layer's color to pink so that they stand out. On this right-hand gable, the triangle that is formed has a bottom cord that spans from this roof baseline on the front of the house to this baseline on the back. On the left hand side, the triangle that is formed is spanning from this baseline on the back to this one on the front. They are not in line with those on the right, so this results in ridge lines that do not match up. Also, if I measure this distance, I have around 24 feet 9 inches. And if I measure the distance on this left hand side, it's about 27 feet, so that is another factor as to why these are not matching up. All hope is not lost, however. There are tools available to correct for this while still managing the roof via the Auto Rebuild Roofs function. On the left hand side here, I actually do not want the gable to go the full length of this wall. Instead, I only want to have it go only as far as the baseline on the right hand side. One option I can do is to break this left wall into two pieces so that part can remain as hip while the other part is gabled. When using this technique, it is a good idea to have your crosshairs turned on, which you can do by going to View and then crosshairs. On the edit toolbar, I'll select the break tool, and then I'll line up my crosshairs with the roof baseline and move over to the wall I need to break. Then I'll make a single left click to break the wall into two pieces. Now I can make one of these pieces a gable and the other hip. A second technique is to use the Gable Line tool to generate the gable on this end instead of using the wall directive. I'll click Undo a couple of times and then change this wall back to a hip wall. Next I'll go to Build, Roof, and then choose the option for Gable Roof Line. I'll zoom in a bit on the area I need to gable and then click and drag a line within the roof overhang. I'm not too worried about the exact length right away, so I'll draw it a bit shorter than the full length needed. If you get prompted to turn on the Roof Gable Lines layer, choose Yes. Now you can see a small gable on this wall. You can control the span of this gable by changing the length of the gable line we have just drawn. I'll bring the back end to the end of the wall, and I'll bring the front end just up to where it is in line with the baseline on the opposite side, using my crosshairs again to line it up. Now let's take a look at this last jog in the ridge. I still have this difference in span to compensate for. One thing that I could do would be to raise the ceiling of this left-hand room so that the rafters in this area rise up, but then on the left-hand side of the structure, the gable will appear lopsided. Instead, in this project, I'm going to lower the right-hand side. To do so, I'll need to gable this small jog, Next, I'll select the north wall and open up the wall specification. Back on the roof panel, I'll use the Extend Slope Downward setting. This setting will merge the roof bearing on this wall with the roof plane that is sloping in the same direction with a parallel baseline so that the selected wall 
is cut to maintain the pitch and location of that second roof plane. Keep in mind that both side connecting walls need to be specified as gable for the extend slope downward setting to function. Next, let's look at these porch roofs. You can see this roof is rather tall and connects with the wall much higher than necessary. I'll use the railings that are defining the perimeter of the porch to control this roof. I'll select this front railing and open its specification. Once again, I'll go to the roof panel. Here you'll find a pitch control. I'll change this to 4 and 12 and then click OK. Now we can see the windows. I'll do the same for this small porch on the right and for the back porch. If you hold the shift key while you click, you can group select these items and then I'll open object to open the specification. And on the roof panel, I'll change the pitch and click OK. You can see that my overhangs for the roofs of shallower pitch are actually quite large. If I look in the build roof dialog, you can see that I have this checkbox for same roof height at exterior walls. This setting means that the roof will prioritize keeping the roofs bearing on the plates of the walls. It will adjust the overhang distances as necessary in order for the eaves to meet correctly. If you want the roof builder to prioritize the eaves instead, you can uncheck this box and put a check mark in the same height at eaves setting. However, this might raise or lower roof planes from the plate height to compensate for the eave distances specified. In most instances, the plate heights are more important, so to compensate for the pitch, I'll typically modify the ceiling heights of the rooms rather than changing the roof directives in the build roof dialog for this. For example, on this front porch, I'll subtract 9 inches from the ceiling height, and you can see that the overhang is back to the 18 inches I wanted. Let's talk a bit about shed roofs. Here I have a basic structure with a few bump outs. I'll use the auto rebuild roof and the wall directives to get a shed roof condition. As before, I'll go to build, roof, and choose build roof, and I'll turn on the auto rebuild roofs. Since I'm working with shed roofs, I'll go ahead and lower the pitch now to 2 and 12 and click OK. Once again, we have hip walls throughout, I'm going to make the big rectangle of this project one shed roof. To do so, I'll start by gabling the north and south walls. Since I do not want to have this gable go all the way across this top wall right now, I'll use the technique that we discussed earlier to break the wall into pieces so that I can specify one piece as gable and the other to remain as hip. I'll select the wall and use the break tool on the edit toolbar. Next, I'll need to specify which side of this gable is the high shed of the shed roof. In this instance, I'll choose the right side. I'll select that wall and open the specification. On the roof panel, I'll choose the option for high shed gable wall, and then I'll click OK. So just to reiterate, I've marked the north and south walls as gable, and I'm marking the east side as the high side of the shed using the high shed gable setting. The left wall is still a hip wall. If I'm adding a hip roof to a bump out, I don't need to worry about the high shed side. It will take care of itself. I'll select the side walls of this bump out and change them to gable walls using the toggle on the edit toolbar. Now let's talk about what happens if I try to attach a shed roof to another shed roof when both roofs have the same pitch. I'll select the side walls of this bump out and change them to gable walls. There is no geometry that will make the outer roof attach to the inner roof without changing the pitch or the height so that it automatically extends the length of the building. If I wanted it to tie in, then I would need to either lower the pitch or lower the baseline of this roof. I can lower the pitch by going into the wall specification, and on the roof panel I can change the pitch, like we did in the previous project. I could lower the height of this room so that the roof plane would eventually merge into the bigger. Or I can use the extend slope downward to automatically get the bump out roof to lower and merge with the larger. 
Once again, remember that you'll need both sides of the bump out to be gabled in order for the extend slope downward to work. Moving on to barrel roofs. Here is the basic shed roof from the last project with the bump outs removed for clarity. You cannot create a curved roof plane with the automatic roof tools. However, you can get the cord of the arc of the barrel automatically and then curve it afterwards. So here we have that shed roof. I'm going to select the roof plane using the Select Objects tool. Then I'll click Open Object. About halfway down the general panel, you'll see the options for curved roof. I'll place a check mark in that setting and additional fields become available. Angle at Eve, Angle at Ridge, and Radius to Framing Top. Most of the time when you're working with curved roof planes, you'll be focusing either on the angle at ridge or angle at eave. I'll set the angle at ridge to zero and click OK so we can talk about what that means. And of course, since I'm making a manual edit, the program will prompt me to turn off the auto rebuild roofs. I'll click yes. OK, so you can see that we have a curved roof plane. It is not a full half barrel or even a symmetrical barrel. It is a portion of an arc with a chord of 2 and 12 where the top of the arc, the ridge, is flat. I'll open the Roof Plane Specification dialog again. This time I'll change the pitch to 4 and 12. Make sure that the ridge is still set at 0 degrees, and then I'll click OK. You can now see that the pitch of my arc has increased, and the top is still flat. Now let's do the opposite. I'll make the angle at eave 0, and then I'll click OK. If this change affects the plate height of the wall, you'll get this message. This is because I have the top of plate setting locked. You'll want to pay attention to how this manual edit affects how the rafter sits on your plate. It might be necessary to raise or lower the roof plane in order to be structurally correct. Now you can see that the arc is inverse to what we had before, but the cord and pitch is the same. If you want something closer to a half circle barrel, then you'll want to specify a pitch of zero and a steep angle at the eave. The steeper the angle at eave is to 90, the more of a half circle you'll get. It is also possible to create a barrel roof using a regular gable roof instead of the shed roof starting condition. You'll just complete these steps for two roof planes instead of just one, and you'll not use a pitch of zero. For Dutch gables and half hip roofs, we'll use the upper pitch settings in the wall specification dialog. I'll start with a half hip roof style. Here I have a regular gable roof. I'll select one of the gable end walls and open its specification. On the roof panel, you'll see the pitch option is grayed out. That is because as a gable wall, it does not have a roof bearing on it, and so does not need the pitch option to control that roof. However, there is a checkbox for upper pitch. When you check this box, you have the option of having a portion of this gable wall be become a hip wall at a certain height. I'll check that box and see that the upper pitch starts at height and in from baseline fields become available. I'll leave the pitch at 6 and 12 for now and jump down to the starts at height. This value is based on the height of zero in the plan, zero being the height of the subfloor of the first floor. How high from zero do you want the gable transition to hip? Let's leave it at the auto populated value of 160 inches and then I'll click OK so that we can see what happens. The hip chamfer starts at 160 inches up from the subfloor of the first floor. OK, let's go back into the wall specification and look at the in from baseline option. In from baseline means that it's going to come in a specific distance before it switches to a hip wall. In this instance, it says 66 inches. Let's look and see what that means. As I mentioned before, I like to have my roof baselines layer turned on, and I make them pink so that they are easier to see. If I measure from one of these baselines to the half hip, you'll see here I will get 66 inches. Next, let's look at Dutch gables, since I use some of the same settings. I'll select the same wall, open the specification, and go to the roof panel. This time I'll select Dutch gable wall, and the upper pitch checkbox is still available, but the pitch setting is grayed out. That is because we'll be splitting the gable on a wall so that it will be higher and set back. I'll leave the start at height and the in from baseline as they are so you can see what happens. 
Now we have a Dutch gable where the transition happens about 160 inches from the subfloor of floor 1 as per the starts at height setting. However, this time, instead of being in from baseline from the left and right walls, it is 66 inches back from the original gable wall. It's a bit hard to measure from this view because the value is actually from the baseline of the original gable wall to the new attic gable wall that has been created. If you need to measure this, go up to the next level, make sure the wall's attic layer is turned on, and turn on your reference display. You should then be able to more closely measure the distance. To create a parapet style roof, we have a few options. Let's start with a roof that is a single shed slope, but with a front parapet. Here I have a sample sloping shed roof, automatically built like we've done before. I'll select the roof edges and manually move them to the inside edge of the walls. Since I'm making a manual edit, it will prompt me to turn off the auto rebuild roofs. Notice that the walls no longer come up to meet the roof. This is because the program is unable to detect the gap since the roof is no longer over the top of those walls. I'll need to draw in those walls manually. To do so, I'll go up a level, turn on my reference display so I can see where the walls exist on the lower floor, and then using my wall tool, trace over the walls I need to parapet. When I'm done, I'll turn off the reference display so that I can more clearly see this level. Next, I'll take cross sections so that I can manipulate the walls and bring them down. This line here is the plate height of my walls. This band is the bit of roof that I have left in front of my camera. If I have a specific height I'm aiming for, I might draw a CAD line and then dimension from the plate height to that CAD line, or I can select the wall polyline and use the temporary dimensions to lower those down. I'll slope the sides and elevation as well. I'll start by first matching the height by selecting the wall polyline and grabbing the top edge, and then snapping it to the height of the front wall. Then I'll draw a CAD line snapping to the roof surface so that I can get the same pitch. Then I'll select that CAD line and move it up until the top edge is even with my front facing wall. I can then modify the wall polyline to match this slope. I'll do the same for the opposite side. Now you can see that I have a front facing parapet roof with a shed roof behind it. And this same technique can be used to make gable parapets and for parapets that go all the way around the building. However, depending upon the needs of the project, it might be faster to create a second floor room on top of the structure made with half walls and no ceiling. Here I have a single story structure. I'll go to Build, Floor, and choose Build New Floor. I'll derive the second floor from the first floor, and I'll review the floor structure settings. For example, you might want to increase the joist depth to accommodate for taller trusses. Next, I'll review the floor finish settings. You'll likely want to change out the planks and foam underlayment for roofing membrane, rigid insulation, and vapor barrier layers instead. On the molding panel, I can replace the default base molding with a different profile to represent a cant strip or a wedge coping, or we can remove it altogether. I'll select the four walls and change them to railings And on the rail style panel, I'll change them to a solid railing. I'll select the room, and in the room specification, on the structure panel, I'll remove the check marks from flat ceiling over this room and roof over this room. And now we have a parapet that's been created with railings on a second floor. Hello again. Uh, I hope you all learned something new about roofs. Uh, do we have any questions? Carrie, we have Charles here with a question. Go ahead and okay. unmute yourself and ask your question, Charles. Good afternoon, Charles from Texas. Um, Hi, Charles. I enjoy that. I do a lot of uh, commercial design with Chief Architect for many years. 
I'm mm-hmm. a user of Chief Architect since the 90s. And uh, I do a lot of gas stations, shopping center, where they have a parapet walls on each side, and you have a single slope with a metal structure. And uh, you just showed a few minutes ago, uh, I can't believe I could do that, but I learned something, but uh, for hey. parapet wall, on the, like if you stand in front of the building, you see all the stuccos and everything, you don't see the metal single slope going in the back. So you have your parapet wall, like the way you show is supposed to be like that. Uh, I did not know that. I've been doing a polyline, doing a lot of hard way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems to be every time I watch something, there's something I keep discovering on Chief. Uh, what do you suggest for metal building a structure, shopping center, gas station? Most of them, they don't have a shingle roof. They have a single slope metal structure or flat roof sometimes. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so you can change the pitch of the, the roof down to something really shallow. And uh-huh. the roof structure itself can be changed out. Uh, let me show my screen and I'll show you a little bit about that. Please. Okay. So here's that parapet roof here. If I select the roof plane, we open it up here. If you go to the structure panel, the structure here, the nine and a quarter, this is where you can set up your rafters, but you can also set up different roof layers as well. So if you're going to be using a different sort of structure than you know just regular for framing, you can swap this out. And then if it's gonna have a metal roof on top of that, that's where the surface layer comes in. If you okay. edit that, you can change, you know, from the asphalt shingles that we have here in the OSB to, you know, standing seam or whatever you're going to use for your commercial project well they also sometimes you can see all the walls layout from floor plan on the roof reflecting so i'm sometimes i have to cheat show with a little bit angles so my client don't see all those junk on the top because they're asking why i can see all my walls uh i mean when you make a 3d view rendering you can see on the top roof all the wall layout like this particular one, I like that. You don't. I can change that to uh, to metal, but mm-hmm. I didn't know you could do this. This is this is great. So that's the reason I'm missing that point. Uh, you see all the walls when you do the 3D view. Uh, this is good enough for me. I think I got it. Oh, I'm glad I could help. Yeah, I'm yes. not sure why you'd be seeing your walls through your roof. That might be something to send into our tech support team so they can tell you what's going on there. Well, because there is no roof like the way you show right now. Oh, you I weren't showing the roof at all. Okay. Yeah, that's that's why. Uh, You're seeing yeah, the walls and the like that. Exactly. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I've okay. I understand. Now. Line, cover everything, but uh, this yeah. is great. So you yeah. you actually yeah you actually build a second floor right to come up with those parapet wall right. Yeah, so this scenario here, I just have the the one floor, but on the attic level, I just created these extra walls here so I could manipulate them. Okay, and another just, thing that I could have done is I could have also grabbed this lower wall and brought it up manually too. Yes. But right. I like to have it separate, you know, especially if you're going to have yes. a plate in there. Um, but if you're going to balloon frame it all the way up, then I'd probably just grab the first floor walls and pull them up. No, this is good because sometimes the bottom has a stone and the top has a metal. This gives you good contrast, actually, uh, two separate walls. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, golly, I missed all this. Okay, thank you very much on this one. Right. Appreciate it. And I, I may have some other question later. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ralph. Carrie, we have Tracy here with a question. Hey, Tracy, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh my goodness, I, I'm I'm discovering new all day long. Um, I have been working for a week trying to get a roof on my place and I'm such a newbie. I'm not sure what the heck I'm doing. Probably everything wrong, but <laughs> okay. I built, I built my personal home, drew it all out. And mm-hmm. then I drew in the area that I want to do for a room addition. My biggest struggle is my garage is breaking my roof. When I go to put it in a gable, you know, I leave it the way it is. It comes on the default as a hip, and then I gable out the areas where I want it. When I do that, the roof splits in two, 
with a tiny little portion off to the left and a big tall slope on the right hand side. And I cannot figure out why. Okay, uh, so the first thing that I would guess is uh, the wall that you're selecting to gable, is that wall going across uh, past beyond the garage? No, but the back of the garage is offset as it connects to the main house. Okay, I so seven foot little where the man door is to go to the backyard. Okay, okay, I think I'm following. Um, one thing that you can get into if the garage ties into the house and you're gabling it and the wall that you're gabling dies into uh, another wall, there's no directive to bring the gable back down. So you might try using the gable roof line to see if you can get that gable across without going as far as that uh, connecting wall. Uh, so so on let's look at the garage as a whole from the from the top view of it the uh, roof plan view on the left hand side there you are you drawing something out for me to yeah. see okay can you see me no My, okay um you see where you've offset it here okay. uh, mm-hmm yeah, it's actually opposite of that. My house is shifted behind it where my garage is, looks bigger from the front, looks wider from the front. But you, you, there you go. Now, right where you see that dimension line drawn in, right there, that's where it's breaking. This one? It, yes, or that over here. Yes, right where you see this 128 and 9 16 uh -huh. If you followed that line, that's exactly where it's breaking. So it's giving me a lower little shed roof. Kind of almost looking like it out of distortion Claire story and that whole other wide portion is where it's one giant slope does that make sense mm. well let's build a roof on this here and just see what we get in the out of the out of the box conditions here okay so are you gabling this wall or this wall over here uh that wall right there that you're currently lit up that's the front of the house. Okay. And it's breaking over here? Yes. It's not doing that. It's not doing that? You're getting something else? Yes, I am getting something completely. So if you were to move that gable ridge line all the way to be parallel with and in line with the back of the house, that's where my break is happening. And mm, I have okay. Wrapped my whole set of drawings, redrawn it three times, thinking I'm building the walls wrong or the room directives or the wall directives, something. But every single time, I guess maybe I'm repeating the same mistake, but everything looks like it should work and it's not. Okay. Uh, send it into our tech support team and we'll see if we can find out uh, what setting you got uh, twisted on there. Okay. How do I, how do, I do that? Uh, through our online support center. So if you go to chiefarchitect.com and log into your My account. Okay. You'll see a link in there that says Technical Support Center where you can create a new case. And can I email them the plan? Yeah, so they, right yeah. through that support center, there's a, an attachment area where you can attach that. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, good job. All right, thank you so much. I, I hope that gives me all the answers I need. I have other roof issues, but I, I think they're just, they start off being wrong there and then it, is a domino effect for the rest of the roof being all I've like a million lines on my roof. It looks like a like a conglomerated something or other. So I'm okay. Yeah, when you're working on roofs, uh, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that all your ceiling heights are where you need them because that's going to govern a lot of how that roof is going to generate. Okay. Um, so make sure all your ceiling heights are where you need them before you build the roof. Um, but yeah, it seems like you know, maybe there's some geometry going on that's interesting in your plan, or maybe there's just a, a, a wall summer that we need to gable properly or something. You're so kind, Carrie. Uh, interesting is a nice word for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Mm, bye. Carrie, we have Brandon here with a question. Brandon, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Brandon. A uh, quickie question on your, uh, your one parapet with the shed. You know, the only really question is based on the, the angled 
version, yeah, that one there. Um, if you don't use the railing wall, do you just would you just draw a cap like in? Um, I guess I'm at the how do how would you draw a cap? You'd have to draw it in like three different pieces with polylines. Okay, yeah, you can certainly draw it with polyline solids. That's and we actually have a video if you have a more complex shape than just like wedges or squares up here, then a polyline solid is probably a little bit easier because you have more control over those. Uh, but if you wanted to have like a cap on top, uh, I tried this earlier. Sometimes it looks all right, sometimes it doesn't, but you might try this wall cap tool here. Um, let me pull one up here and see what it looks yeah, like. I didn't know if the wall cap tool worked if you didn't call it a railing. Yeah, the wall cap you can actually put on a lot of different uh, style of walls now. And see, I think a sills might be best here. You could try that one or one of those if you wanted it to be symmetrical. And then, you know, it's just a matter of modifying that shape. Okay. Now, you can kind Great. of see a little bit about some of the limitations here is it kind of detects that lower wall and it doesn't always come to the end. So depending okay. on how detailed you need it, this may work for you, it might not. Okay, thank you. Carrie, our next question is from Andre. Andre, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, good Hi. afternoon, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, for us anyway. <laughs> yeah, at least for me. <laughs> you do all right. Um, yeah, I have a question. I'm not sure how, how, how well I'm going to get to explain it, but I'm going to do my best to try. Okay. Okay. So a parapet wall, um, or a parapet roof rather, I find that with Chief, is is a brilliant program. Let me say, you know, it's a nice program. But I find, you know, just like with anything else, you'll get quirks here and there. So. When I'm doing a uh, parapet roof, sometimes the way the detail may work, I um, saw so you have one on screen now where you actually have three walls and then the other side is free for guttering. But if we're doing a complete situation where you had a parapet right around, I find when you put the, and it's a mono pitch roof, you put it down inside and then you try to pull that roof neat as it were, to be bounded by the walls. We know in, re in reality it's not going to be exactly like that, but for the purpose of modern, you put it in there, I find Chief starts to behave strangely, especially sometimes where that roof touches the wall. I've turned off gutters, I've tried all sorts of settings. Um, mm -hmm. what, what exactly is the best uh, methodology to not have that happen? Okay, so it kind of depends a little bit about what exactly is happening. What it sounds like what you're encountering is if you have very little overhang, you know, like if we bring this up really close, you lose the fascia board here. Does that sound like what you're getting? Um, well, yes, um, that's one side of it. But, um, okay, so let's okay. work on that first and then we'll okay. go to the next yeah. one just so you get the answer to this one. Right. Now, it needs room to create that fascia board. So if you just have like maybe one inch of an overhang on there, you'll get that board back. Okay. Okay, so what's the next one? Right, so that's one side. So using that same scenario, if, for example, rather than just that mono pitch, let's say it has something like a, butterf a butterfly roof. Okay. And um, inside now, I want the client to be able to see the exposed rafters and so, and I actually take out the flat ceiling and ask it, obviously once you take out that flat option, it then tends to follow the slope of the roof. Mm -hmm. But there's, like this, there's like this white piece because the, 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 the best way for me to describe it, my butterfly roof works in this way. There's a concrete gutter that runs sort of central along the parallel to the, the length of the building. And the mm -hmm. two roofs come down and connect into that concrete roof. But if I, when I pull it over, I actually tried polyline solid. I tried doing it with walls. But that little piece of ce ceiling um, surface keeps jutting its head out depending on how far I pull it. So I, I said probably what I might have to do is to Turn it off altogether, probably, and use manual ceiling planes or something like that. I think probably but that may be the way I think that I might probably have to do that. Yeah, maybe. You know, with the, the butterfly roofs, you know, with the inverted sort of ridge there, kind of a valley coming down the middle, you're going to, you might see some artifacts inside when you're exposing it um, where the rafter depth is. Uh, so it might be something that might be better handled with uh, manual ceiling planes. But when you get it, you know, send it into our tech support team. You know, worst comes to worst, we'll tell you that you have to do it manually. But and the side effect for it is that we can send that project to our developers who can mm -hmm. then improve the software as we go along to you know, kind of compensate a bit more for those uh, more unique situations. 
Okay, and just one final question, because I know I'm, I'm probably being a bit long, but just one final question. If I have, uh, and this is really, this relates to curvature now on roofs, not necessarily borrow fall or anything like that, but um, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm, I'm calling from Barbados, so this is probably going to be very different from probably what you may be seeing where you where you are there in, in America. Mm -hmm. But we have something here called the Chattel House. It's a very historic house. You probably might find them in... Uh, North Carolina, because some of the architecture is similar, I find there. The curvature where you draw a roof and it comes down slopes, um, everyone think of it like a shed roof, but rather than it being a slanted slope, it gradually moves into a curve. So by the time it gets to the bottom where the fascia is, it starts out straight, but then it almost like how a truck, the mouth of a trumpet is. And that happens on tree surfaces, and those tree surfaces then are connected into a main roof. I guess if I may have to guess, send send it send in the model to show show you what 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 it is that I'm after probably. Or yeah, so it starts it. out uh, as a, a flat roof at a specific angle, and then it kind of flares out. Yes. Okay, you probably do that with uh, two different roof planes. You know, one that is the flat, and then connect the the eave of it with another one that you then curve. That way, you're not affecting the first one with the second one. So kind of like how you do a uh, gambrel, two, pit, two, two pitches, um, basically you stop at a certain point and then you, you start off a new roof at a different pitch. And blend yeah, two, exactly. Blend two. Okay. Yeah, so you'd start out with the flat one and then that, that eave area that flares out, you know, you'd set the pitch of that to be, you know, however much that chord of the arc is, mm -hmm. and then you would curve it, you know, one way or the other as appropriate. So one other question then, if you're saying that then, how easy is it then well, you know, there's a there's a there's a cleanup tool where you where you, you actually clean up clean up tool where to wall planes obviously meet to form a seam. How easy is it to do um, clean up in, in in that sense? Relatively easy, or it it, sh it should not be a problem. It should clean up like how would, under normal conditions. Uh, under normal conditions, it does pretty good. Uh, there's certain areas like if the the seam between the two roof planes is right over like the the very edge of the siding of the wall, it might pop open a little bit, but for the most part, we've we've compensated for a lot of that already. Okay, so thank you If you see any weird artifacts much. like that, send it in. You know, we like to improve the software as we can. Thank you very, very much. Okay, no problem. Carrie, our next question is from Jack. Hi, Jack, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing great, how are you doing, Jack? I'm okay, uh, evening in, in uh, London. Yeah, um, we've got, all the way I've got London. A, I've got a bow window okay. uh, running up from uh, ground floor through the first floor. I wanted a, a gable over the top of the bow. Now, if we auto-generate the roof, we get a series of hips mm -hmm. uh, to a point. But I want we needed a gable that then extended beyond the, the final window. So if you imagine the bow that with five panes, the middle pane would be the, the, the pane that protrudes the most off of the okay. front elevation. We need the gable to protrude, uh, roof to protrude more than that with a ceiling line because we need to show the customer from inside the house this, the, like a finished, what the property will look like finished from inside as well as outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it, I want... Yeah, the automatic roofs I don't think will do that for you. So you'll probably have to draw that gable in manually. Yes, that's what I thought. But that's what I've done, but I didn't know if there was faster solutions. Not for that one, I don't think. No. Okay, thank you. Yep. That's all the questions we have today. Were there any announcements you wanted to make, Carrie? Okay, yeah, let me pull that up. Uh, so if you enjoyed this webinar, we have a, a few more coming up. Uh, we have one on multi-pitch roofs, roofs and uh, story and a half sort of styles that are coming up next week. Uh, after that, we have a webinar dedicated to dormers. So if that's something that you all struggle with, feel free to pop in on those webinars. Uh, we have virtual training coming up in May. Uh, the first class of that starts uh, April 28th, um, but we also have uh, some in May and one in June. So that's gonna be the introductory class, uh, kitchen and bath class, and an intermediate class. Uh, of course, we have those classes in on-demand versions as well. So if you wanted to sign up and watch it at your own pace, and we have that on our website. Uh, our one-on-one -on -one training service is always popular. We connect through GoToMeeting or through Zoom and you know discuss what you're working on. Um, that's $125 an hour. Feel free to give us a call and we can get you on the schedule. Uh, 
on our website, we have lots of how-to resources. We have articles and we have the videos. Um, when you get a time, you know, just pop in, watch a video, read an article, learn something new. And Chief Talk is our user forum. Great resource to get in touch with other users of the software and learn new things from each other. You know, especially if you have a, a particular project, sometimes somebody else may have already encountered that sort of uh, struggle that you have. And sometimes just asking a question can get an answer fairly quick, especially you know over the weekend when you know we don't have tech support available to you. Thanks again for attending, and we hope to see you next week.